actually, like, they say seven yards in, five yards in, but a whole lot of them will take place in seven yards. Higher, here's where I'll identify some of the things. So, from out here, we're doing this, about catching jumps. You might end up in baseball bat or on the elbow, which gives us a little better control if he starts to play. The elbow gives us, if he's like, you knows how can I play on the wrist, you can kind of play on the wrist. So here, yeah, a little less likely out here where I can feel like this. Once he gives me that chance, once I drive in, I'm going to get the back, I can feel and guide. If it's really up close, it's behind the leg, just you're going to pull from the waistband. Remember, you're working the military, you guys still in the sock, complaining about their husband, you just took away, whatever. Then his elbow is death. 45 is weapon. This is weapon, this is weapon, this is weapon. Bent elbow, this shape, means weapon. If I got a put you guy and put him on a quarter and it turned out uh, and he didn't have a weapon, okay, can I justify it? I was reasonably scared for my life. I saw a 45 degree bend. I saw the V-shape in his elbow. I thought he was getting a weapon. What was he doing? I don't know. But I have to assume it's a weapon in the waistband, behind the waistband, in the back pocket. Screwdrivers and box cutters. The guys that work hard are usually good guys, but then on Friday they get their check and they're alcoholics on Friday. And they do so sniff. Those guys with that box cutter suddenly are very, very dangerous. So pay attention. And so sometimes, especially if you're a bouncer, if it's coming out behind that leg or that waistband here, it's a little different. From real bad breath distance, I might not do this one. Go and pull and go, I'll do this one. And I might, and I missed it. But I come up here, now this is what I want. That's the problem with this technique. But I, if that's what I went to, that's what I go to. I want this. I really want this. And then it can work, I can knee, take it, go. But as you saw, because he kept his arm stiff, I, because he, he didn't really pump it, like most people have done the elbow to pump, he didn't really pump it. That could happen, so I, I might have came up to here. This is dangerous, keeping your arm straight the way it was. The problem with this technique is it might end up here. And if he's good, he can start kind of flaying my neck a bit. Hopefully I have the sensitivity and the control where I can then work where I need it, okay? I'm doing seal out now, okay. So, um, anyway, if it bends in an ideal situation, Sometimes we go up close when we're talking, and he goes here, and I'll go jam and punch and wrap. I'm hoping I get that bent elbow. It's very easy to take him over, knee the head, and easily wrist lock that out. But again, I'm drilling this one, I've had it, but it's not awesome when that knife's here. Hopefully he can't, you know, hopefully it's this side, the tang, not the blade. Hopefully he's not like knowing how to rotate it so there is that technique or different ways of doing it. Other people teach it. And they try to go here and it looks all nice. The problem is some people will uh, try that here. Boom, boom. Yes. Or I'm here and I turn it and I see cut his guts out. Ooh. So that is what he's doing and it's a little more. But it might be the right technique from here. And so I go with double energy and I try it. Okay. Just know if that's your default, that that works if you see this, but if the guy suddenly goes here, it didn't work so good. If he comes up here and here, it doesn't work so good. Okay. Okay. Let's talk uh, abduction. Hold. He puts it here, he puts it here. Let's talk some different stuff here. Abduction holds are different. Okay. He's not trying to stab me, he's trying to either rob me or take me to a second location. If you're a woman, especially, especially not, I mean, if you're a young boy too, don't go to a secondary location. Never get in the trunk of the car. It's better to fight with all your might and eye gouge and bite and scream and get attention here. Hopefully they don't kill you on the spot because there's too much scene around. Fight, when you decide to go, you go 110%. You never give half resistance. So, when you're playing with someone, you're like, hey man, I don't want any trouble, here's my wallet, here's my keys, cool, there you go, you take my stuff. You either are fully compliant, or you fully fight, and this goes with pistol robberies too. 
and you, you gotta know how to switch from okay dude man, I'll give you my wallet, I'll give you a wallet, I carry it back up, kaboom, you don't have time to respond. Because you're crazy like me. That's the point nine eight seconds. It takes most people a second and a half to even start to move. Okay? So you're playing with OODA, OODA loop, hot reaction time. Getting a little off track. But the point is, even in, in pistol abductions, it's, hey, okay, man, whoa, oh, dude, please, man, I got a family. I'll give you a wallet, I'll give you a wallet, give me my keys. And maybe that works. More often nowadays, it used to work. They're just shooting and stabbing people because they're so high and crazy and mad at the world. So it's not a very good tactic anymore. But you fully comply until it's time not to comply. When you fight, you fight with all your might. You don't go halfway. So if he goes, does this, I don't go, oh man, please, I don't kind of start doing jerky motions and kind of half fighting him. Because he'll get more angry and maybe he stabs me in an accident. So I'm fully compliant or I'm fully engaged. Make sense? Fully compliant or fully fight. No in between. If it's just an abduction, don't go to a second location. Please remember that. If it's the point where they're trying to take you, a bunch of guys, to a dark alley, away from things, to a car, into a van, you fight with all your might before you make a lot of noise. You butt, you rip, you scream your own off. Okay, play psychologically, magic. Okay, dude, what do you want? I'll give you my car keys, I'll give you anything you want. Can I, can I get my wallet? Can I get my wallet? He may look down, and that's when I go. So no matter where he is, I can always, if he's big and you're small, you can't always fight someone way bigger. But like against the wall, you move your hips, you have to learn how to move yourself. So if he had it, I don't care what, if he had it to my neck or whatever, I can trap down, do my Wing Chun, Krav Maga thing, could be up here, but I at least can go up here, huh? and I get him over here, and I hollow out. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, hey, what do you want, man? Talk to him. What do you want? Get in a good uh, position where maybe I'm more into him, or maybe I can bump him with my hip, and maybe I can headbutt him, or whatever. What do you want? And I can work against the, the flat of the blade, not the sharp part. If it's an abduction from behind, now this is really dangerous, especially if you're a woman, because you're small and he's able to break your structure. You have to fight to not have your structure broken. So, go ahead. Yeah. I have to try to number one, snatch and attach and get my base, spread your legs, lower your hips. But now, I still talk to him. I'm not fighting all the time. I might be, okay dude, okay dude, what do you want? And now I'm tucking, lifting my shoulder, tucking my chin, Okay? Hey, okay man, what do you want? And then ask what do you want? What do you want? Those your keys, your money, or you're mine now, and whatever, okay? So maybe you drop your keys, your wallet to distract him. Sometimes that works. I can't, and that's the time to go. But like, ask him what you want, but try not to get your structure broken and taken to a secondary location. So I want to go in here. And I don't fight him strong, but I might keep a reference. Go ahead and uh, put the blade. My, so we're, here. so we're here. I'm trying to, okay, okay, dude, what do you want, man? What do you want? All right, dude, okay, what can I do for you, dude? Hey, man, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. And then try to get him to talk back. Say, so just come with me. Come on, come on, let's go. Try to get him talking, and then I go. When he talks back is when you go. Because the Uda loop in the brain, he is engaged in the verbal cortex or something way higher than my little college talking, okay? Try to get them to talk back. That's a very good time to go. Or when they drop something, they're distracted. Or when they look over there, because someone said, hey, what's going on? That's the time to go. For this one, I don't have time to teach it. I would try to get in here, or maybe in here, against the flat of the blade. So, again, we can hollow out. Mm. It's like washing myself with soap. I can get into small spaces, instead of big monkey movements. I can go in here. I can get here. Now watch the knife, put it to my artery, get, yeah, grab, grab me. Yeah, okay. So this is very dangerous, because it's at the artery. But I might be like, hey, I don't want any trouble. Try to turn into him a little bit. And now watch the blade. Where's the blade? Is it near my artery anymore? No. Put it there? Is it near my artery anymore? No. Okay. So, Hey man, what's what's the problem? What do you want? Say something back? Yeah. 
Let's go. Let's okay, go. Okay, I get my hands close to the weapon hand. See, I'm just being compliant. And now it's time to go. By turning my shoulder up, like I'm a little teapot, it moved this from here to here. And that's all the difference I need. Now I can slip out. Keep it to him. Maybe get behind him, maybe get the knife. Okay? To learn how to hollow out the motions we did in the beginning. Like, oh, this is silly. We wasted our time. You didn't waste your time. You're learning how to move and breathe and control in a different way. Because he'll be pulling me here and I learn how to fight back and get my structure and my spine back. And learn how to hollow out and get uh, a hold of the hold of the knife. So, just start putting it in this grand and put me in different things. Whoa, what do you want, man? Give me back, man. Come on, you're on the TV. Hey, give me your keys, give me one. Okay, let's go, let's okay, go, let's go. Okay, you're walk. Okay, here, man. Dude, here. Wow! Now I go. You see my timing? Try to engage them. To go, give me. You're coming with me and get in the car, an abduction or something. I don't know. Right to my kidney or. Come on, let's go. Uh, this is pretty tough because he's got pretty good hold. Okay, so what I gotta do is when he's taking me, I gotta distract him and I gotta wiggle a little bit. Here he's good, here I'm good. Can you see it? Here he's good. Whoa, dude, what's the problem? Here I'm good before I go. So I might try to use my shoulder looseness to get my elbow back before I decide to work on something. Okay, because I have joint independence, I have fluidity, flexibility. Okay, one more, the last thing we're gonna do is, uh, guys, if you're getting stabbed in the back, just like most common is grab and swing machine stab from the front, to kill someone or in prison, it's more like whack, 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 whack. They're gonna pump it in your kidney. Or you're running a business and you're actually defended yourself and threw one guy down and you're punching his face in and he's bent over. If you feel this, if you ever think to yourself, oh, I'm getting punched in the back. Oh, that didn't hurt. If you ever tell yourself the words, that didn't hurt, I'm getting punched in the back, what was that? Well, that's no big deal. And you're dealing with someone else, you're wrestling with somebody else, that means you're getting stabbed. It's often this, but it could also be this, okay? These are less common, a lot less common. It's like 13% or something of all attacks. But it could be this. So you gotta go on the first, second, third one. You don't take eight or nine and minimize damage and I try to go on one or two. So if I feel that, what I gotta do is I guide with the elbow first and then I get behind the blades. But I have to go loosely, not to turn on him like a fighter, but actually good wrestling. This is good cage work. The guy's at your back, you lead with the elbow. You don't do it strong and static, do it loose. He comes here, I go loose. Whatever I end up with after that, I don't care. I'm behind the knife. Come on, we're sit down. Come on, buddy. Yeah, feel your feet, you can stab me a little bit. Okay. I might be yeah, next one one. I might end up deeper. I might end up over. I might end up here. I can fight him here because I know how to break his structure to take him down that way by wiggling him. Okay? So, if you get stabbed in the back, you gotta turn with your elbow. If it's up high, stab me in like the neck. I stab him up high with the elbow and get a text. Now we're gonna fight him. Make sense? Any questions about anything? We went a long time, thank you all for showing up. Hopefully tomorrow with Nogi, we'll do a lot of submissions. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at the end, the end of the I hope you enjoyed it. We got a little side track on some stuff. Uh, but it is the stuff that will save your butt. It's not always the cool stuff, it's the stuff that will save your butt. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get my DVD, Commander's Street Jiu Jitsu on uh, BJJ Fanatics. It's four and a half hours, it's a good value. It'll re-ingrain a lot of the stuff we did. Uh, and that's it. Thank you for coming. See you tomorrow.